Welcome back. You're still on Citizen Extra, the Tuesday edition with me, Fred in the Mule. We continue discussing the Jubilee Manifesto as launched yesterday, a 76-page document. A quick look at the 10 points on the manifesto include 1.3 million new jobs every year, government-sponsored apprenticeship, a double number of vulnerable citizens supported through the cash transfer program, free primary and secondary education, 500,000 affordable homes, free maternity, uh, including uh, every expectant mother getting uh, funded by NHIF cover for a year after birth, reliable and affordable electricity, food and agriculture production, 57 large-scale dam construction, making government more transparent and accountable. That, that's just a quick outline of uh, the Jubilee Manifesto. I remember they said it is a 76-page document. You can understand it even more. Now, before you even come back to the discussion in studio, let's go to... Uh, link up with our reporter Patrick Gunza who's at uh, the launch of a corporate governance index report a very good morning to you Patrick uh, tell us exactly where you are what you're doing and uh, take it away good morning to you too it is a chilly morning here at the Stanley Hotel where I was attending a launch by Saturn Investment and uh, today they were launching their second edition of the uh, Corporate Governance Index Report, which is basically a report or analysis that looks We do apologize for the lack of connection. We're having a poor connection there with Patrick at the Stanley Hotel. We will be going back to Patrick in a short while once we do sort out that connectivity. But in studio, we still have Bona Isaac Moore, nominated MP, Peter Kaluma, MP, Homer Bay Town, Gabriel Muduma, analyst, and also William Odiambo, an economic analyst. Now, just before the break, of course, we got uh, Bona Odiambo's uh, take on that particular issue. Let's go now to Bona Peter Kaluma. Uh, the uh, promise of 1.3 million new jobs per year. Do you think it's a realistic promise? Is it something that uh, <coughs> NASA would come close to? You know, Fred, I'm now more convinced than ever that uh, Jubilee takes Kenyans uh, not to be, you know, clever enough to see through these falsehoods being pervaded by them, you know, throughout the administration. Fred, uh, look at statistics and data. How many students graduate from all our universities in a year? We are talking about 10,000. If indeed Jubilee has been, uh, you know, employing or has secured about 750,000 employment to Kenyans in a year, you would be expecting that, you know, sir, these 10,000 graduates are among that 750,000, you know, Kenyans being employed per year. But look at it. It is not true. Moya will tell you across here that just before we went on recess as parliament, some low cadre jobs were you know, advertised by parliament there. And, and I'm afraid if you can see the number of graduates who are online from you know, county hall through to parliament, through to intercontinental hotel, for a whole week you have difficulties passing them. These are all graduates, no, not people of any lesser education. So, so this is a falsehood. Jubilee would have done well to tell us what they are going to do in the same manner nations which secure a job for their people, you know, conduct and act. And I'm and, afraid and what those nations do is, number one, to ensure that there are firms, there are businesses, there are corporations who, which can absorb these people. Look, Jubilee came in when so many industries were struggling. What effort has Jubilee made to revive the industries around the cotton sector. What efforts has Jubilee made to revive the industries around the sugar sector to absorb these, you know, imaginary jobs they are now talking about? You know, nothing. Instead, you have more sectors also collapsing. You see the bailout to the coffee sector, you know, each year. You see the bailout to the tea sector each year. What I'm saying is that you have a government without any economic plan or platform to ensure people are jobs, uh, have jobs, and you have a government who is pirating on the idea that over 9 million of the voters we are going to meet are of course the youth and they are jobless outside there. I think we need a proper, you know, job security plan and it is not there. What we had were phantoms and imagination. Okay. Bona Muduma, 
uh, in terms of being uh, realistic, do you think that particular promise is uh, 1.3 million new jobs? Remember, they promised a million last time around. Uh, they only managed, uh, even what Bonamora agrees is that they did not manage that. They got 750,000. Uh, Peter Kaluma disagrees even with that particular figure. But now by going ahead and promising even more, yes, uh, in comparison to what they've done uh, in as far as the promise on economic growth is concerned, where they actually they left that one out, their initial promise of a double-digit growth did not really pan out well, so they decided not to tax that area, but they'll go ahead and promise more jobs. Do you think it's realistic? Uh, Fred, let's look at what has been achieved versus what they promised. Uh, if on the onset of uh, 2013 they promised that they would offer a million jobs and they've only been able to uh, come up with uh, uh, seven, uh, seven, uh, 750,000 jobs, uh, well, and uh, the statistics are there. If uh, uh, that's what we are being introduced to, then you have to question or query uh, why did they not hit their target or what do we do with the deficit? Uh, to be, to, to be, to, to rather be honest and not really to strangle them down. And this is not just Jubilee, it's any administration that would come in. The question that I would ask is, is there easiness? Have they actually made strides to ensure that we are getting more multinationals coming in? Because at the end of the day, Fred, me and you know that the government will not be able to absorb all uh, the people that are leaving our, our academic institutions. But who are they going, who actually is likely going to absorb them? looking at the private sector and really Juakali and to an extent the SMEs who have actually done very well. Uh, if you are talking about getting or reaching, which is more than a half, 750,000, then how do you extend that to 1.3? What does Jubilee know that most of us don't know? Number one, I'll equate it to the fact that you are talking about creating an environment where businesses come and thrive. Why are businesses leaving? Now you have to ask yourself that. Majority of which, which I would guess, and my good friend Odiambo has actually alluded to it, the production cost is still high. What does the government need to do to cater for that uh, particular ailment. Mm -hmm. Number one is, you know, the introduction that what they've done in matters geothermal. I think we need, uh, uh, Fred, we need to build on a good idea. And I agree most of the time with, uh, with, with when uh, our good Professor PLO says that uh, a good idea must pave way to a better one. Mm -hmm. So if we are talking about uh, 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 moving our energies uh, together as a country, synergizing them and asking ourselves how can we reduce this burden of production as a country, we can get it right. The other thing which actually many people have not understood in creating our economy is the factual knowledge, which I believe is being pushed forward. Honorable uh, Mora told us, um, uh, and we heard yesterday, about how the government is shaping ICT. Now, many probably multinationals wanting to come in, they want to understand because jobs, I mean, everything is becoming technical. Mm -hmm. Serious technical advancement. They want to know, do we have the labor force? Is Kenya ready? to give us the people who can do these jobs. So knowledge once is, in the, uh, if we continue to intensify knowledge, and this has got nothing to do with Jubilee or NASA. This is a country heading in the right direction and the demands of the 21st century. If we intensify knowledge, if we prioritize on skill and efficiency, these jobs will come because that's the work of government. Don't you, don't you we are supposed to build an environment, yes. we are supposed to create an environment where XYZ job creator when they come in they want to ensure that they do not think, uh, bueno, Gabriel, that probably those two things are interconnected uh, the uh, gro growth in economy uh, as well as jobs that if at all you're looking at the possibility of increasing the job market uh, increasing and getting 1.3 million new jobs per year that probably you're coming from a very bold position in terms of your economic outlook that probably you're actually seeing that yes the economy might actually grow uh, more than even we expected it how come they did not promise it has a growth in the economy. Fred, it has nowhere to go than grow. And the reason why I'm saying this is we must intensify, you know, that which works. If Jubilee have sat down with the, the, with, with the economic architects and they have been told that you need to work something on your production, you will be, uh, on lowering your production cost, you need to work something on your tax bracket, you need to give incentives to these companies like the, like the, 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 the idea that they are pushing. For, uh, for internships, paid internships. Now, I don't expect the government to come and give 
are these uh, students who are in this company's money? Uh, for instance, let me just guess, and this is a uh, hypothesis I'm giving you. If a company like Safaricom, let me just put the name there, mm -hmm. uh, gets to absorb about 2,000, and this is just a hypothetical number, I don't expect the government to come and pay those 2,000, but what they can do is to give some element of tax rebate to a company like Safaricom so that they can go ahead and actually give some sort of stipend, which Mohesh will tell you very well that's what they used to get. Now, if that is the idea we are pushing across as a nation, that can be understood, all right? And then the, the knowledge I'm talking about is one that renders people to become responsible. That is a good avenue. When you're talking about reducing the cost, and this is where I want us to target, mm -hmm. Fred, they must work in tandem with other things. And I feel Jubilee may get it right, all right, to put this foundation. And this is what I would want any other administration coming in, Fred, to build upon. Okay. If, they are, if they have a foundation, Honorable Kaluma, if they are, is a foundation that is right, let's build upon it. Before, before, we, before, before we go to Bona, uh, more, I think Bona Kaluma wants to react to that. Quick reaction, Bona Kaluma, before we come to Fred, uh, Just a simple question. You know, Jubilee is telling us that over the past four years, 750,000 Kenyans have been, you know, getting jobs each year. Who are these Kenyans? Well, as I said, the Kenyans who should be in employment are on the streets in Nairobi and on streets across. Who are the Kenyans? And, and, and what jobs are we talking about? You know, sometimes you, you may think, uh, you know, leading a country is some drama. It is not. When you tell, uh, you know, people graduating from the university, and this is, uh, uh, Fred, uh, you know, 10,000 people and over, that you are going to secure them places in a pretension in, in which they are going to be paid 15,000 each. I'm just taking a conservative figure of, of 10,000. Multiply 10,000 by 15,000. You see where you are? The, these things don't make sense. Actually, you are saying you are going to play it pay apprentice uh, about uh, you know two billion each year in an economy in which even those who are already in formal public service, like the nurses, the teachers, are there asking you for money to survive on. But here you are talking of, you know, playing an, playing an apprentice 15,000. But w what is being paid to a police officer who is newly recruited? 16,000. What is being paid to a nurse outside there? You cannot address these issues of collective bargaining agreement. But here you are with some, you know, phantom in the air thinking Kenyans are fools. You are going to not only employ everybody who is not employed outside there without creating the environment for it. I okay. think Jubilee is playing with our head. Fred, and, and, and we need very, to stop them. Very quickly, let me <laughs> tell you that I like Maura. Yes, Gabriel. Quick, let, 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 me, let me very quickly say something. You see, I'm talking about giving giving credence to an idea that's working. Forget about the internship program because that's an idea which would work. Forget about the money that they'll pay, be paid. This is somebody who has come out of college who's getting an experience all right, is getting experience mm -hmm. for a number uh, for, for a period of months, and this is what's needed. So, when a company is coming from offshore, and really we have to get these people in because we have not understood the basics. Because if we did, on Rabo Kaluma, let me tell you, the county governments would absorb a lot of graduates coming out of our academic okay. institutions. Okay. But why are they not able to do so? It is because they have focused their eyes on the national government. Okay. Just a little bit. Let's take away the national government equation. When I look more, we're looking at the possibility that yes, some of these promises could be unrealistic. A case in point, if we go back to 2013, uh, the Jubilee administration promised double-digit growth. We've mentioned it here. That did not happen. They realized that yes, probably that could have been an, an, an unrealistic promise. They've not promised anything to do with economic growth this time round, at least not directly. But when they promised 1.3 million new jobs, that is reminiscent of an administration that's very bold, that's probably looking forward and seeing the economic outlook is very positive. Why do you think they, did, they stayed away from actually predicting that, yes, this is the kind of growth we expect? Thank you, Fred. It, uh, that, uh, you know, broad, uh, you know, uh, uh, bullish um, uh, outlook is predicated upon the fact that our economy is growing at a rate of 5.8%. Uh, against the global average of 1.5 percent and if you look at the regional economies uh, you realize that actually we are doing far much better than any of our neighbors mm. uh, when you look at the ease of doing business we are moved from position in terms of economic growth yes 
Yes. Uh, Ethiopia yes. is doing 10 point no, Ethiopia, if, if you, We are talking about the East African economy, the five East African countries. Uh, when, when, you, when you look at uh, the ease of doing business, it's not true actually. We moved from position 130 to position 90. It is the intention of the Jubilee administration to come down to position 50. Fred, companies are coming to Kenya. And in fact recently, and it's available to Kenyans, the top CEOs of this country have shown that with the 45 million Kenyans and the, the, the market available uh, for within the East Africa, we have about 200 million individuals, that is greater than Brazil, Kenya can only do better. And, and, and the case in point is where when you look at the new companies that have come on board, Peugeot has come back to Kenya, Toyota uh, is, is scaling up. When you look at uh, um, even uh, Volkswagen, VW, uh, you have a 12 billion investment company in Sultan Hamoud for making cans. More and more companies are coming to Kenya. In fact, when you look at how Kenya has positioned itself across Africa, it's really impressive. Mm -hmm. We are the third, uh, you know, fastest growing economy in the world. In the world. So when you want to say that things are not looking up, the government, what the government is doing, in, for example, in terms of electricity connectivity, I mean, more homes are being connected. Ev almost every school in this country has electricity. It is the intention of the, of, of, of the government to, con uh, to, to, to connect uh, many homes. You have the geothermal, you have the wind, uh, the, the, question was, like, the question was, why do you think the, pres uh, the president and his deputy stayed away, uh, st uh, rather steered clear of actually giving a prediction in terms of economic growth, but going ahead and saying yes, 1.3 million new jobs, which I would assume in their own thinking it means probably the economy is going to grow bigger and be able to accommodate that kind of uh, uh, workforce. Exactly because our economy is very diversified. It is within the same, you know, you know medium term uh, uh, plan that we are also going to tap into the oil, oil revenue. If you look at the mineral royalties, they have already come up. If you look at the number of uh, the teachers who are employed, we only employ 4,000. In the last years, we have, uh, we have employed over 16,000. Look at the National Youth Service Program, for example. Uh, only 4,000 people used to be admitted. Now we have about 37,000. And this needs to be commercialized to do jobs not only here but abroad. Mm -hmm. The government is realistic. We know we do not want to have a situation where you overpromise. When we say, for example, that we are going to grow the economy, as of now it's 5.8%, you wouldn't go and say that you are going to double that to 10%. It is not realistic. But because do you think last time they overpromised when they said double digit growth? You know, at that point, the macroeconomic variables must have been very different from now. I think uh, we have an administration that is more realistic. We have an administration that has been tried and tested. We have an administration that knows, for example, you cannot start free uh, secondary education in August. You've got to do it in January because you have to got, you've got to have a plan. Mm -hmm. It's not you know, uh, you know, predicated on populism. Mm -hmm. It is about realism. And, and, I, and I want to say this, Fred, that when you actually look at the Jubilee, Jubilee administration, you may say there is no razzmatazz and, and all of that, but because there is an information overload, the Jubilee administration has actually outdone itself in promising the country. And I like the paradigm where we in move away in making promises. Mm -hmm. It has outdone itself. You, no, in terms of delivery. Yes, that is true. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of delivering on its promises. In fact, when you look at the score, I think for me I would give the Jubilee administration over ninety percent. It is not everything that has been done, but even the NASA would agree that Jubilee has actually tried its best. Okay. But it is a different thing to come on the platform and, you know, and excite people mm -hmm. and promise people that, oh, we are going to give you uniforms, I don't know what, which what we are hearing, the, the copycat, uh, you know, mentality that we are getting. And, and let, let, me, let me finish by saying this, that in fact and indeed, uh, uh, the Jubilee administration has actually focused on economic development. Mm -hmm. Over 7,000 kilometers of road have been constructed or are under construction. When you look at, for example, the issue of stadia, in terms of making uh, uh, this economy, um, you know, you know, uh, you know, us using sports, uh, sports tourism, already five, uh, nine, nine stadia are, are already being constructed. Now, now that you bring up the issue of stadia, uh, and that was one uh, uh, that we really talked about, uh, about. It was one of the major promises that the Jubilee made: five international stadia's stadia uh, in the next five years. That did not happen. They've launched a new mani manifesto. It features nowhere. In fact, they're only talking about continuing with construction of free stadia in Eldoret, I think, and Mombasa. Uh, don't you think these are clear cases of when uh, they overpromised and they've realized, okay, fine, that was a bit unrealistic? No, not really. In fact, the Jubilee administration has moved from five to nine stadia. And already five of them are near comp completion. In the next six months, they'll be completed. We are looking at even some, some problems around Kisumu because of the garbage. 
We are looking at around the problems around Mombasa because of the title issue. Mm -hmm. those, th th those are some of the things that are slowing down. But if you look at like uh, West Pokot, you, you, ha you have the Cameroon Stadium. If you look at even some uh, that would actually be under the, 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 local uh, the county governments, like Kiambu, like Meru, all of them, monies have been pumped to improve them. Okay. And so the Jubilee Administration is not true. Okay. The Jubilee Administration has actually been on record and on time in implementing its manifesto. Time for another break. But before we uh, go to this break, because I want to give you a, a last opportunity to comment about something, and that has to do with the, probably what you expect will be the similarities between this, uh, the promises made yesterday, and the promises that are going to be made later this afternoon by NASA. Yes, uh, we, uh, from the snippets we've seen from uh, the documents that we understand uh, could make up some of the promises by NASA, the NASA manifesto. Free secondary education, we know, is one thing they've talked about as well. Free secondary education also features in the Jubilee Manifesto. 500,000 affordable homes features in the Jubilee Manifesto also features in the discussions that NASA has been having. Are these the similarities that we expect? Do we really expect a markedly different document later this afternoon? Bona William Odiambo, briefly, let's start with you. Do you expect any major difference this afternoon? Yes, I do. Um, <coughs> but there are, there are certain similarities that would uh, generally be there. Uh, naturally, uh, NASA also has to give its promises on healthcare, it has to give its promises on education, uh, free secondary education uh, as it were, it has to give its promises on uh, proper economic growth, uh, it has to give its promises on employment. Uh, but perhaps I think where the identity of NASA stands out is they have been very vocal on issues of governance. Something that uh, the Jubilee administration has not been very vocal on. Uh, in fact, uh, there have been uh, culprits of the same. Uh, so I, I would expect as, as, as a promise on, on, on proper governance of the country. I would expect a promise on uh, a proper international relations, uh, given that the NASA principles have no uh, ICC tag on, on their back. Mm -hmm. um, I would ex expect a, a better promise on uh, farmers uh, being taken care of, uh, because what Jubilee was offering was a subsidy uh, that uh, made the, 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 the prices of uh, fertilizers to go down by 200 from 2,000 to 1,800, but made the prices of maize to go down by 1,000. And so I would expect NASA to, to do a better job on that front. Uh, so those are some of my expectations okay. in terms of the difference. Uh, when uh, Peter Kaluma yesterday, the deputy president, accused uh, NASA and the opposition of seeking to copy the Jubilee document, do you agree that there are some promises made by Jubilee that even NASA cannot stay away from, that you cannot avoid making similar promises? First, uh, Fred Faster, uh, even myself seated here, I don't know, I've, I'm yet to read our manifesto, uh, although I know the general uh, philosophy of NASA and what you would want to do to the country, and I think you are going to set out that in the next phase of the interview. So, so unless the deputy, you know, president uh, became the NASA secretary who was typing the manifesto. I don't know this copy thing he's talking about. And, and, and you know, these are the things that, you know, diminish us what would be a serious occasion like a manifesto launch of Jubilee into some small thing where you imagine what NASA could be doing. Now, having said that, uh, you know, Fred, l let me say that the vision map for our country today is the Constitution. There is nowhere else you are going to search for what to do for this country. And, and for those who have read our constitution, if you just implemented just half of it faithfully, we would be moving towards you know, a first world very quickly. Now, now, that being so, in terms of what each administration would want to do, they are already circumscribed there. There are provisions on education, for instance, that we are now talking about. And, and remember, the right to free education for our children, free basic education. And, and this basic education is up to second. So those are some of the similarities that yes, there will be has to. Similarity. The, the difference will be, uh, Fred, too. One, do we trust Jubilee to implement it? And the problems are basically the same. Correct. And uh, number two are, of course, strategies. Mm -hmm. Because, you see, Jubilee is coming to tell you, we are going to do this thing beginning January. By the way, Fred, do you know the financial year will begin in July? And the budget for that financial year was passed uh, by me and Maura in April. Mm -hmm. and, and by the way, the cost of this free secondary education, a, a Kilemi Muria, you know, confirmed, is just but between 50 billion and 60 billion.
And then I'll you please tell him you they are going to do it from next year when they have kept promising it through the years it was in their manifesto last time. Who will trust them to do that? But that's so the difference still remains as far as secondary education is concerned. It's whether we do it in September or January. No, not just that. Not just that, but also the extent of doing it. I've heard my brother Maul say, how can you give pupils or, or students in secondary uniform? I mean, today when you send, uh, you know, students to secondary school, the uniforms are being purchased from the school there. Get the costing of the uniform needs per student and pay it to the institution, let it be given to them. Okay. So, so we want to go that deep, but, but the big difference is who do we trust to implement it? Do you okay. want to trust you believe it has promised it for five years without delivery, okay. or NASA telling you we are going to do it and, and start it by this time? Gabriel Mugoma, would you expect yeah. any major similarities or differences? Uh, when the NASA launched the manifesto later today? Uh, I, I think, uh, first of all, let me agree uh, with uh, Rabu Kalumu when he talks about the constitution and what should be mirrored and uh, how the things that uh, may be done therein uh, for, for a lot of what these both manifestos may, may appear. It should actually uh, go back and actually identify or hold us close uh, when the constitution, you know, the document that we all agree reigns supreme, you know, uh, suffices. But uh, other than that, I think I do not see, I don't, I, 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 I do not know, I mean, I've not seen the NASA uh, manifesto, but I don't think it would be a serious break-off from what we have seen the Jubilee implement. Because now, the major issue is that you have a government here who says, we are doing, we are continuing, mm -hmm. all right? This is a very good foundation versus one that is saying, we will do. So okay. already, if you're going to put these two to the start by the way, you will see, the exactly, you will see, uh, I mean, for, forget the premise, I mean, how easy is it going to be mm -hmm. for somebody in NASA to come and say, you know what, Jubilee has offer, offered what you call uh, for standard one kids, the little schools that have these gadgets, they said, you know what, we are going to take these back. All right. Okay. So, I mean, you, you, have, you must build upon, and you are going to be forced by the common one IG to build upon this good idea. You have been probably, and this is where the issue may come in, you have been actually beating on some of the things that are working. For young kids, they will not understand you taking away their pad when you know giving them nothing. So you have to be forced to build on something better. Promise. When it's not only on education, when it comes to youth and employment, mm -hmm. you also have to come up with better ideas than what Jubilee is offering. And this is where push will come to shop. So I would like to see, I would like to see, like uh, Kaluma is saying, a deeper promise. And not only that, at the end of the day, the stage will be set to ask, who do you trust to implement? And if it's going to be that way, if it's the issue about trust, then NASA must be forced to offer better mm -hmm. than what Jubilee is offering. Uh, Isaac Mora, finally and very briefly, uh, you've been in ODM for quite a while. You moved across to the other side uh, very recently. Uh, when it comes to the major differences you expect between NASA and the Jubilee in as far as the promises are concerned, do you think we should be... We are in for a major surprise later this afternoon. Nothing but because, as you rightly said, I've been in ODM, and in 2007 I was part of the manifesto making committee. Uh, in 2013, I was also involved, um, and uh, I can tell you for sure. Like we were supposed to launch our manifesto yesterday, NASA was supposed to. Uh, let me say ODM was supposed to launch it on Sunday, but they changed quickly because, as you realize, they are just copy pasting uh, what you believe is saying. Now, ODM thrives on uh, really, uh, you know, long-ish socio-economic, social-development issues around there. Some family political ideology that is not realistic. And uh, the Jubilee is more right-wing in terms of practicalism of the economy. Having that, it's like when you're, you, when you're wooing a woman, you can say, I'll take you to the bar, I'll buy you everything, <laughs> just to let them. And that's what ODM is doing. But when you get married, then you tell them, for sure, this is our monthly income as a family. That is what, so Jubilee is more practical. What Jubilee is doing. Yes, Jubilee is more practical, is more realistic, and we will not, you know, engage in some act of populism. As uh, Edmund Buck says, we must also use and employ our talent to say that yes, we have economists, this is what they are predicting, okay. this is how the economy is, so that we can move the society forward, so that we don't lie to them. Because the moment you have a promise that you don't deliver, then you just create disaffection and people do not believe in matters of state. We cannot just use the manifesto to capture the state. And a very good point uh, in time I would want to say. How do you tell us that Jimmy Wanjiki, for example, is the one who is going to finance <laughs> the, 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 the NASA? That's no, 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 let me say no, totally no, no, I, Let me explain. The NASA dream, yet Red you are saying you are against Red corruption. For the benefit of our audience, I'll have to explain Red that no, whole story. The, I do not have that. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's but that's it's in the public domain. So we must be consistent in our messaging. Don't just do things because you want to attract 
okay. you know you know headlines okay. we are in jubilee are practical we have uh, you know put our our statements out there on what we need to do and i would want to ask kenyans to give uhuru okay. mwegai kenyatta another five year term okay thank you so much mwana isaac mwara nominated mp peter kaluma mp homa bay town william odiambo economic analyst and gabriel muduma our analyst as well helping us look at the jubilee manifesto as well as the expectation for the nasa manifesto to be launched later this afternoon let's now head back to uh Patrick Gunza, uh, who's attending the Corporate Governance Index report launch uh, by Site on Investments. Patrick, I do hope we have a better signal this time round. Please go ahead. And if you may ask uh, a question to those attending there, uh, in as far as the 1.3 million jobs promised by Jubilee, is it something realistic? Patrick. Thank you very much indeed, Freddie. That question I will be posing to Maurice Odor, who's the investment manager at Site on before I finish this interview with him. But first of all, we will delve straight into the issue that brought me here at the Stanley's this morning, and that was the launch of the Corporate Governance Index Report by Site on Investment, which basically analyzes how a listed companies at the NAC go about corporate governance. In simple terms, corporate governance is basically uh, perhaps a direction or controls or just uh, the systems through which our firms are held to account. Remember, over the years we've had corporations and other business entities actually being driven by primarily profit. But it has come a time when stakeholders are asking, will businesses shift focus from only the idea of making profit and start interrogating the means through which these profits are made and this means taking into account shareholders needs as well as ethics and uh, international best practices when it comes to executing their mandate and without wasting time I will be introducing Maurice Odor who will be joining me on set to just help us understand what are some of the key highlights of this particular report which is now in its second edition the first one was launched last year today they did launch the, launch the second edition and we will be finding out what is different from last year's report compared to this one Morris thank you very much for joining us just help us understand what are some of the key highlights that have come out of this year's uh, governance corporate index report the key highlights are some of the things that we've seen with this report. There's been a lot of push, a lot of move, movement in terms of the industry move towards more governance, more transparency in terms of how they do business. We've also seen a lot of movement from the public sector point of view. The launch of Mwongozo to lead in terms of governance with the private based institutions, mainly for startups. And we are seeing companies moving more now towards transparency, improving the way they do business. They move now towards more sustainability and protecting shareholder value. Uh -huh. You did focus on 50 companies listed at the NSC. Why companies that are trading at the boss? Because if you look at these are the public companies listed that Kenyans are members of the public invest their money, buy shares from the exchange, and they are mainly exposed in terms of these are the companies investing. So it was a better starting point to look at the companies that are listed at the exchange so that we give Kenyans a view, apart from looking at simply the financial settlement, look at in terms of how companies create this value, whether the business environment is sustainable and whether they are within the ethics and institutional based practice. Yes. And how did they fare when it comes to, let's say, uh, stock prices for these companies as well as return on their investment or their shareholders' investment when it comes to upholding proper gov uh, corporate governance? If you look at, we look at a number of 24 metrics that defines how the, that forms the, the core of the corporate governance. And we took, when we ranked all the companies, the top 25 companies in terms of the corporate governance index outperformed the companies that ranked lower and also in the same same index. So what this one means is the corporate governance is directly proportional to the levels of return that shareholders and investors start to get from the exchange. Because if you look at, again, look at another meeting, look at what the board, the diversity of the board, and again, boards that are more diversified, companies are more diversified in terms of ethnicity, in terms of gender, again, outperform the companies that are less diversified. So in overall, the ethics, governance, and the structures are put in place to ensure that the business are run within the international best practice informs the return that shareholders start to get mm -hmm. from them. And as an investor, as we wind up, as an investor, what message do you give to me when it comes to this launch? What is the take-home message for me? 
as an investor, the key message from this report is look beyond the numbers. We do analysis, look at which companies to pick, go beyond the numbers, look at how they do business, look at how the board is constituted, look at the ethnicity of people in the board, look at the gender, look at how the board members pay themselves, look at the experience and the skills of those board members. Because at the end of the day, this form the skill set and the foundation upon which the companies make growth and profitability. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much indeed. But before I let you go, I will honor my promise to Fred and ask you a question that emerged out of yesterday's uh, manifesto launched by the Jubilee Party, which indicates in one of their provisions that they will be creating 1.3 million jobs on an annual basis. And Fred wants to know how practical, how realistic, how viable is this kind of promise by the Jubilee government, given the current economic dynamics. If you look at Patrick, job creation is the end product of a number of things that we have to do. We have to ensure that the main thing we have to ensure that the business environment remains conducive for us to continue even ensuring that the local companies are thriving in that environment, ensure that even foreign investors are coming and setting up in the country. But unfortunately, if you look at the Kenyan environment, we are coming in an environment where most companies are laying off. Look at banks. Last week was backless, one party staff going home, voluntary exit schemes. Look at KCB have announced layoffs. So where we are, a lot more remains to be done. We have a lot of work to do to ensure so that we create those jobs. We have to ensure that the working environment remains conducive, access to credit, attracting foreign investors, ensuring that even the opening of companies, entrepreneurial environment remains conducive, then all these jobs will just come. We have to talk of the processes, not not run to the product. Job creation, that's 1.2 million is start to it's going to be not going to be easy to create. But at the end of the day, if we ensure that the business environment is conducive, those jobs now will become a end product of this conducive business environment. Thank you very much indeed, Morris. There you have it, Freddie. I've delivered on my promise, and I owe you nothing as far as that question goes. But now be prepared to actually receive an invoice from me here because of that duty that I just did. It was supposed to be yours. I hand it over back to you, Freddie. You've delivered on that particular promise. Thank you so much, Patrick, for that. Patrick Igunza there, live from uh, the launch of the Corporate Governance Index Report by Cyton Investment. He was speaking to Maurice Odwar, an investment manager at Cyton. Here in studio, things have changed as well. We're now joined by uh, Michael Aguanda, an analyst. Uh, uh, Brian Muti also joins us. And Johnson Gidaka, they'll be our analysts for the next uh, hour. We continue discussing the Jubilee Manifesto as well as the expectations for later this afternoon as well as the general political uh, environment because the campaigns are going on. And speaking of campaigns, the Jubilee Party goes back on the campaign trail after their manifesto launch yesterday. Today they will be in Tarakanepi. Our reporter Jackie Maribe is on standby to give us a report and an update from the going zone in Tarakanepi. We'll be doing that as well after the break.